Hello students, our today's topic is Ogenesis. The class is important for class 12 as well as those are preparing for NET. You know every year, either in, in class 2 or in NET, uh, in MCQ, there are many questions from reproduction in human. So under reproduction in human, last class I discussed about spermatogenesis for class 12. So today I will explain about Ogenesis. All of you know that eugenesis. What do you mean by eugenesis? Eugenesis means just production of ovum. You know, within our ovary, means in female body, two ovaries are present, and each month or every month from female body, means from ovary, one egg or one ova will release and it will be an alternative process. So the release of ovum or ova from each ovary. That is the process known as ovulation. But how the ovum will uh, produce into uh, ovary? That is the process that is eugenesis. So the production or the formation of ova within ovary. That is the process. The process name is eugenesis. You know, eugenesis starts. Already I told you that in human body, generally in human uh, female and male body, generally what happens, you know, uh, actually, the hormonal secretion, any other reproductive cycle will changes, it starts in puberty. But, you know, eugenesis process that start in female body when ultimately it is in fetus. So, in fetus, in embryo, ultimately eugenesis process starts. That is multiplication phase. But, uh, actually, the growth phase that starts in female body about eugenesis it is in uh, adolescence period so you know in adolescence period or in puberty it will start so let's start about the chapter that is eugenesis so already i told you eugenesis means production of ova or production of mature egg into ovary or formation of ova into ovary that is known as eugenesis now there are some stages if I say the uh, location of eugenesis, so that is very easy that location of eugenesis uh, in ovary. You know, eugenesis occurs into ovary. Now, uh, time period of eugenesis, eugenesis starts in female body, in, in embryo means in, when it is in fetus, but it is in multiplication phase, but actually the growth phase of eugenesis starts in puberty. So, there are a few stages the formation of eugenesis i have written here number one that is multiplication phase number two growth phase number three maturation phase now what about multiplication phase first of all these are puponeum or you can say germ cells so from ugonia or from germ cells there will be production of additional ugonia. So look at the board here. I have written here from ugonia or from germ cells with the help of mitosis. Mitosis means you know types of cell division. There are three types of cell division: amitosis, mitosis, and meiosis. Already you learned about in uh, learn about it in class eleven. So uh, in the process of mitosis, there will be production of additional ugonia. And here it is. 2n means the chromosome number deployed and additional ugonia there will be also chromosome number deployed because due to mitosis so due to mitosis from ugonia or germ cells there will be production of additional ugonia it takes place in human female body in the fetus in the RV embryo that is multiplication phase but in puberty in the uh, time period when the menstruation cycle starts in female body, uh, in puberty, what happened? In puberty, from ugonia or from germ cell, there will be production of primary follicle. So, there will be production of primary follicle or primary oocyte. Better you can say that that is primary oocyte. So, there will be production of primary oocyte from ugonia i am writing here oocyte so number one it is ugonia or germ cells from here there will be production of primary oocyte that is growth phase 
so from ugonium there will be production of primary oocyte that is growth phase and the ugonium chromosome number 2n that is diploid and similarly primary oocyte these are also chromosome number 2n means diploid so due to mitosis there will be production of equal division but you know in uh, meiosis is reduction of division that's why next step we will see that there will be half number of chromosome means 46 number of chromosomes who are there in uh, primary oocyte but in secondary oocyte there will be 23 chromosome means it will reduce that's why it is known as reduction or division due to meiosis so in first phase from ugonia in puberty stage there will be production of primary oocyte and the chromosome number of primary oocyte that is 46 means diploid and therefore there will be meiosis 1 you know there are two meiosis two meiosis will be there meiosis 1 meiosis 2 and there are a few stages already you learn about in uh, class A at 11 you know pachytin, diplotin, gyrotin, uh, diplotin, pachytin so these are few sub stages of meiosis so first of all from primary oocyte there will be production of secondary oocyte and how secondary oocyte will form secondary oocyte will form from prim primary oocyte by meiosis 1 as secondary oocyte will form from primary oocyte by meiosis 1 so as a result in secondary oocyte the chromosome number will reduce it will be half so here the primary oocyte chromosome number was 46 but in secondary oocyte the chromosome number 23 look at the structure that is secondary oocyte and here when from primary oocyte second uh, from primary oocyte secondary oocyte is forming therefore also there will be production of polar body it is known as polar body so from primary oocyte in maturation phase means in phase 3 first phase that is multiplication phase second phase that is growth phase third phase that is maturation phase in maturation phase from primary oocyte there will be production of secondary oocyte when in meiosis from primary oocyte secondary oocyte will form uh, at that time also along with the secondary oocyte one polar body will form that is polar body so in meiosis 2 means in maturation phase next phase in uh, next stage in meiosis 2 there will be also production of uh, from secondary oocyte there will be mature egg will release and here from secondary oocyte another polar body will also form and when from primary oocyte secondary oocyte is forming one polar body form it will again divide and again it will form two polar body look at the structure here the polar body meiosis uh, we are due to second meiosis the chromosome number 23 but in the second uh, polar body when from one polar body two polar bodies are forming these are also equal means uh, 23 23 chromosome number and from secondary oocyte here it is secondary oocyte when it is forming natural egg there will be production of also another uh, polar body so here are three polar bodies are formed if I again show you again next division, so from each polar body again two polar bodies are formed. Ultimately, it will degenerate. It will destroy. It will with the help of menstruation cycle. Ultimately, when it will destroy uh, from the uterine wall, it will pass. So these are polar body during oogenesis. It will form. So along with the secondary oocyte, when the secondary oocyte is forming, now the polar bodies these are formed. So it is about oogenesis. Now what happens if the egg is fertilized or when copulation occurs, sexual intercourse occurs, then what will occur? If sexual intercourse occurs, then sperm will enter and the sperm will come into secondary oocyte. It is secondary oocyte and the sperm will come to, uh, uh, the sperm wants to fuse here and it will come into secondary oocyte. And therefore, when the sperm will come into secondary oocyte, if the egg is fertilized, means the secondary oocyte, if the if the secondary oocyte is fertilized, what will occur? The sperm nucleus will enter here. If I show you that the it is the mature egg and the egg is fertilized, so therefore the nucleus of sperm will enter here. So look at the structure here. The mature egg, which is fertilized, where two nucleus are present. One is the nucleus of egg and the other one is the pronucleus of sperm and there will be fusion of sperm nucleus and uh, ovum nucleus. If I show you next stage, there will be fusion of sperm nucleus and ovum nucleus and it is fused and you know the 
structure which is forming after the fusion of sperm nucleus look at the structure here i am showing you here is the last stage here the zygote is forming if the secondary oocyte is fertilized it is the secondary oocyte when it, when a sperm will enter therefore the sperm, uh, sperm pro nucleus enter here it is mature egg and therefore when the sperm nucleus will enter here it will fuse here to form zygote it is the structure known as zygote you know after fertilization the structure which is forming it is known as zygote so that is the structure after fertilization it will form so it is about oogenesis so the stages of oogenesis is very very important for you now there are various questions from oogenesis just like differentiate between spermatogenesis oogenesis differentiate between spermatogonia oogonia so you can write easily just like spermatogenesis oogenesis spermatogenesis takes place in uh, in where it will takes place in testes but uh, oogenesis takes place in uh, ovaries similarly uh, in the process of spermatogenesis sperms are formed but in the process of oogenesis ovum uh, uh, sorry uh, eggs are formed so these are some uh, terms related to here now i will show you the hormonal control regarding oogenesis how, uh, how the hormone will control in the process of oogenesis that is very very important I am writing here, first of all, ultimately to control the process of oogenesis, two main parts in our brain, they are responsible. Number one, hypothalamus and the number two, that is anterior pituitary. You know, pituitary gland, we say that master gland because it releases most of the tropic hormones from here and after all, it will control any other activity of any other, uh, it will control the activity of any other endocrine gland. So ultimately pituitary gland as well as hypothalamus is very very important to control this activity. So the process of oogenesis ultimately controlled by two parts in our brain. One is hypothalamus, other one is uh, pituitary or anterior pituitary. When they are releasing hormone, there will be positive feedback mechanism as well as negative feedback mechanism. So how they will control, they will uh, ultimately uh, control the process of oogenesis that I will show you now. First of all, from hypothalamus, here it will release GnRH. You know, from hypothalamus, GnRH will release gonadotropic releasing hormone. The full form of GnRH that is gonadotropic releasing hormone. When GnRH will release from here, so it will act on anterior pituitary. So ultimately GnRH it will act on anterior pituitary and from anterior pituitary two hormones will release from anterior pituitary there will be two hormones one is FSH and the other one is LH so from anterior pituitary two hormones will release one is follicle stimulating hormone other one is luteinizing hormone the follicle stimulating hormone it will act on graphene follicle and the luteinizing hormone it will act on corpus luteum so within the ovary you know graphene follicles and corpus luteum are there so the fsh act on graphene follicle lh act on corpus luteum i am writing here after this process, graphene follicle and corpus luteum, when the graphene follicle and corpus luteum are there, the graphene follicle will release estrogen hormone and the corpus luteum will release progesterone hormone. So from here, estrogen hormone will release and from corpus luteum progesterone hormone will release 
so these are two hormone secreting from two main parts one is from graafian follicle estrogen other one is from corpus luteum progesterone and it will come into uterus to maintain any other activity so ultimately the oogenesis process carried out by uh, these hormones these are also secreting from here and from corpus luteum also there will be secretion of inhibin it will give negative feedback mechanism there will be secretion of inhibin so these are about the hormonal mechanism hormonal control in the process of oogenesis carried out by hypothalamus and anterior pituitary hypothalamus will release gnrh gonadotropic releasing hormone it will act on anterior pituitary therefore from anterior pituitary two hormones will release one is follicle stimulating hormone other one is luteinizing hormone the follicle stimulating hormone will act on graafian follicle and the luteinizing hormone will act on corpus luteum and from graafian follicle estrogen hormone will release from corpus luteum progesterone hormone will release ultimately the estrogen and progesterone it will come into uterus and also uh, to give negative feedback mechanism from corpus luteum inhibit will release now you know both are responsible in the process of oogenesis because estrogen and progesterone these are two important hormone responsible to maintain the process of oogenesis because one more thing they are responsible for the process of oogenesis but when from the hypothalamus gnrh will not release it will not stimulate the anterior pituitary therefore the anterior pituitary will not release fsh and lh without follicle stimulating hormone means fsh and luteinizing hormone means lh it will not ultimately occur so fsh and lh they will act respectively one means fsh will act on graafian follicle and corpus luteum will act on progesterone that is the reason therefore they will uh, ultimately work so there will be the master gland means the anterior pituitary it is working but before it gnrh gonadotropic releasing hormone it will also release from hypothalamus to control the activity now what about the significance of oogenesis you know the oogenesis process here meiosis will occur and you know in meiosis crossing over will occur so in the process of oogenesis very very important that is there will be crossing over and due to crossing over there will be production of new species there will be production of uh, new generation so you know uh, the due to crossing over new varieties will form number one number two there will be production of polar body there are few germ cells in our body with the help of polar body it will remove from our body with the help of menstruation cycle in female body so is uh, ultimately oogenesis process is very much important and third point that is most important that is with the help of oogenesis there will be production of ova and as ova will produce or ova will release from each ovary so you know there will be the process that is fertilization if the sperm entered there will be the process fertilization and in human body that is internal fertilization means the fertilization process takes place you know in the female reproductive class i told you the fertilization process takes place in fallopian tube or in oviduct so it is very very important for the process oogenesis because without oogenesis in female body you know uh, egg will not produce egg will not release the ovulation will not occur so what so that is very very important one more thing mind day ovulation oogenesis these are two different ovulation means the release of ova by the rupturing of the wall of the ovary that is ovulation and oogenesis means production of or for formation of ova into ovary that is oogenesis so without oogenesis ovulation process will not occur in the process of menstruation cycle next class i will tell you about i will explain about menstruation cycle and easter cycle there i will tell you uh, told you that there i will tell you that uh, without the process of ovulation fertilization process will not occur so ultimately the basic reason of the process of ovulation is due to oogenesis without oogenesis ovulation will not occur when the ovulation will the process of ovulation will not occur ultimately uh, there will be the problem means the fertilization will not occur so the process of oogenesis that is very very important for you i hope you have understood uh, you uh, and if you have any doubts any query you may ask me uh, from this chapter also and last thing that is the oogenesis process 
that is very important already i told you that it starts in fetus means in embryo but in the multiplication phase but if i say growth phase it will start that is in uh, puberty so thank you students i hope you are enjoying my class so next class i will explain about next uh, menstruation cycle means there is menstruation cycle and estrus cycle that i will expect next class thank you very much